It's the fastest growing refugee crisis since the Second World War. More than one and a half million people have now fled Ukraine because of the Russian invasion. STV News is in Poland, where two Scottish brothers have been describing how they were forced to flee from their homes, along with their families, as Ukraine came under attack. Stuart and Robert Mackenzie spoke of their horror and are now determined to help their friends and other loved ones escape. Well, Louise Hosey is in Poland tonight. Louise, the refugees just keep coming. Yes, that's right, Norman. I'm here tonight in Krakow, which is Poland's second largest city. We're currently around 160 miles from the border, which of course is where we've seen that huge influx of refugees following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Well, among those who had to leave their homes and leave everything behind are two brothers from Scotland. They're currently here in Krakow, and I was speaking to them earlier today. It looks like a normal family scene, but for Stuart, Robert and their families, the past 12 days have been anything but normal. The brothers had to make the heartbreaking decision to leave the country they'd called home. The kids could hear bombs and the youngest one, Oscar, said, I don't want to die, I'm only eight. We said, let's get out. And we said, right. And then we heard something. And then as we left, we heard another one. And it was like, we can't believe this is happening. Right? This, is, this is it. As bombs started to fall around them, Stuart's wife knew they had to leave her homeland. It was around five o'clock when we heard the sounds of the explosion and it felt like it happening in, in, in the backyard, you know, in our garden. And that, that was the moment when I realized we have to go right now. And I just started packing very quickly for five hours and uh, we got into the car and we left. You know, you wake up the next morning to the shock I'm just thinking that you don't have a home yet. You know, you're without, everything's just gone. It took Stuart and his family 18 hours to cross the border from Kiev. For Robert, it would take days. We were 24 kilometres from the border. And we said, how long will it take us to get to the border? And he said, three to four days. And we thought, there's no way this is going to happen, 24 kilometres. But that's actually what happened. Stuck in huge traffic jams and freezing conditions, Robert says the scenes he witnessed will never leave him. As I crossed the road, I saw an old woman just lying dead um, with her family around her, crying. And she was old, you know. So uh, a lot of people were concerned about old people travelling, you know, in cars, and she just died. The brothers have now rented two houses in Krakow, they hope it will only be a temporary measure. Everyone wants to go back to Kiev. It's a huge, big family community there. Um, yeah. That's the plan, but we don't know if that's going to happen. It's just horrifying. The streets that we know, the cafes that we knew, the buildings that we, you know, all just, just there's such a beautiful, clean city, and it's, we don't know what we'd ever go back to, but we definitely want to go back. And we still have people there, of course. Of course, all, the, all our male friends are still there. <laughs> And that's what we're trying to do now, is make sure that when the, at least when the women and children are coming, we can look after them and they don't have to worry. The brothers say while their experience has been traumatic, they consider themselves the lucky ones. They say their thoughts remain with those in the country they love. You feel so bad for everybody else still there. and We can't get back to normality until we at least, at least get you know, our friends and you know, family members and colleagues in a safe place. And Louise, some harrowing scenes there. A massive humanitarian effort is now underway where you are. Yes, that's right. People here really are pulling together to help those most in need. During the day today, we've seen many more refugees arriving here at the train station. Uh, there's been volunteers there providing them with hot food and drink and, crucially, some, some comfort as well. Um, to give you some idea of the sheer scale of refugees that we are seeing here, the hotel that we're staying at the, at, at the moment told us earlier on uh, that around 90% of people staying there are refugees. Uh, well, tomorrow we'll be travelling east to the border uh, to see that huge humanitarian aid effort firsthand. OK, Louise in Poland, thank you.